A new school record holder from just down the street looking to snatch the state title from a pair of his best friends. Also, a two-time Olympic veteran tells us about his experience in Beijing. And finally, a young goalkeeper looking to find some familiarity with a new team. All that and more coming up right now on The Scoreboard. Hey everyone, welcome on into the scoreboard. I'm your host, Blake O'Reilly, and it is Friday, April 1st, 2022. And this year just keeps flying by, and so does the spring seasons as we kick into region play. And coming up in the show today, we're going to be talking a whole lot of different sports from a whole lot of different athletes. We've got track and field, we've got soccer, we've got ski jumping, we've got an Olympian on this show. We are jam-packed and we are ready to go. So without further ado, we're going to get started with a new school record over here at Park City High School. Hell by the new champion in Jesse Helton. He broke a record that was just about the same age as him. So with that being said, here is me sitting down with Jesse Helton. Hey, what's going on everybody? Blake O'Rulian alongside the Park City brand new school record holder, Jesse Helton. And, and Jesse, I really, first question I just want to get out of the way. How old are you? 18 years old. And how old was that school record? Do you know? Uh, 18 years old. So, so how does it feel to know that you broke a record that's as old as you? Um, it's great. Honestly, I've been looking for all three records, so indoor shot, outdoor shot, and discus. And um, as we talked about earlier, I did get the out or indoor shot, and I just got the outdoor shot. And that's a um, very proud, very good moment for me. I'm very excited about that. Of course, yeah. Um, I just bettered my track and field record for shot put indoor um, with 55 feet, 2 inches. Um, that was really a great accomplishment for me as of last year. I only went 47 feet, so... Doing really good there. Um, I broke the record initially at 50 foot two, I think. So I just bettered that by five feet, which I was really proud of. Um, still hoping to get that 60, um, but uh, yeah, season's going great so far. Yeah, can you kind of walk us through what happened in, in terms of, of getting that on Saturday? Um, basically just had the mindset of um, just go for it, you know. I had already qualified for state, so I was just, um, you know, hunting for records basically. And I was super excited. Um, I started a lot more. Um, it felt great. It was a good throw. I definitely have some stuff to improve on, so that's going to be the biggest focus now. Yeah, you're. I mean, there's not a whole lot to focus on, but I mean, I mean obviously there, there's things to improve. You're the number four shot put thrower in the entire state. Two of those people behind are some of your good friends, the Bryant brothers. How do you think you'll catch up to them by the end of this season in May? Um, actually, yes, I think I can. Shout out to Mark Bryant. Actually, throwing 61-8. It was that pretty was crazy. Insane. It was insane. Um, Eric Bryant, 59-8, um, so he's very close right there. I think it'll be a great season. I definitely think I can inch up top three up in that list. Um, beating Mark, I don't think so. But me and Mark, I think we can battle a little bit. You have uh, quite the history here, but over the years, from the time you were a freshman, you were aver your, I think your high was about 30, 35, is that correct? Yeah. And now you're about to push 60. I mean, what can you tell us a little bit about this progression that you've had over these years, including a season that was canceled in your sophomore year when COVID hit? Um, I think it's a lot of just um, doing what I love and just footwork and perseverance and trusting the process, really. I think um, having a love for the sport also helps and just having, not having it be a chore. It's more of just a fun activity to do and go out and have fun with. Um, but yeah, it's crazy to see the progression. I mean, I have throws when I was throwing 30 feet and now pushing 55, 56. It's kind of crazy to see how far I've come, but it's really cool. Yeah, I mean, we spoke about uh, two months ago and you mentioned 60 is the goal. Do you think you're going to hit that? Uh, I think I will, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Do you think you're going to continue to break this record as the season goes on? Is it going to be like every meet we're going to be trying to talk to you? I don't think every meet necessarily, but I think um, coming up in a few, definitely. Um, just trying to just every, just, uh, I guess, fine tune things. Um, definitely just get tweak as much as I can out there. Hopefully, hopefully the goal is 60 yeah. still. A, a lot of times you talk to throwers, or, or as in my experience when I've talked to throwers, you know, they say, as soon as I released it, I knew. 
Is that something that you felt when you when you threw it this week? I actually didn't. Okay. I've had better throws. I felt like where I was more, ooh, that was a good throw. This one, I was actually, as soon as I walked out the back of the ring and they said, I was super surprised. I actually didn't expect it to be that far. Um, super, I mean, super stoked that it was, but um, there's definitely a feeling, and I think that um, I can get that feeling back and definitely go over 60 with that. So once they told you, I, I kind of asked you this earlier, but, but how does it feel to know that there's really never been a student here that's, that's thrown shot put better than you? Yeah. Um, it's great, honestly. It's um, uh, the previous shot put holder and then the person who's in front of me, Eli Alford. Um, he, you know, I've, I've talked to him about it. We've actually had some conversations, and I just think it's, it's kind of crazy yeah. being the, having the fact that I've passed everybody and now it's just fighting with myself, but it's actually really nice. I still have a discus record to go after. Um, it's been out there a long time too, and that's a big mark, so that's, that'll be the next goal. Yeah, I actually wanted to ask you about that. You did just qualify as well. You had a big weekend. Yeah. You qualified for state for discus as well. Uh, how far are you away from that discus record? Um, previously last year. This year, um, having some kind of issues getting back at it, but I think um, I'll definitely get over it. Last year, I am. I'm, I think I'm officially two feet off. Okay. Two feet off of that record. Okay. And and that's very doable. It seems yeah. like with you, with your progression. Yeah. Um. That's always the goal. I think. Um. You know, we always strive for perfection. So I think that's going to be the biggest goal coming into the discus. Well, Jesse, good luck. You are an incredible athlete. We really appreciate it, and good Thank luck for the rest of the season. Jesse, really appreciate the time, and good luck to hit that 60. We believe in you. We can't wait to continue to cover you and the rest of this incredible Park City track and field team, and we're going to be following them more and more as the season goes on. When we come back, it's the highest level you can get. We're talking to the two-time Olympian ski jumper, Kevin Bickner, on the scoreboard. The scoreboard is proudly sponsored by Andrea Cox Mortgage. Welcome to First Rate Mortgage. My name's James and I've been in the market for mortgages several times over the years, so I've gone through the process with different people. And uh, when I met Andrea, she explained to me why my current loans were subpar and how she could get better loans with better rates. If I had to describe Andrea in one word, I think I would use the word passionate. She is very passionate about what she does and getting the right solutions for her clients. Uh, and that made her an absolute pleasure to work with. Hi, I'm Andrea Cox. You can reach me at 435-631-9262. Call me, text me, or you can reach me on my website, andreacoxmortgage.com. Hey everyone, welcome back into the scoreboard. We just talked to Jesse Helton and now we're gonna jump right back into a couple more interviews. This one now with the two-time Olympian, three-time USSA Ski Athlete of the Year in Kevin Bickner. Brigham Harris got the chance to talk to him a little bit about his experiences in Beijing as well as the rest of his career and how much longer he wants to continue to do this. So I won't give it all away. Here is Brigham Harris talking to Kevin Bickner. All right, well, let's talk a little bit about it. You're, you're a very decorated ski jump athlete. Uh, tell me just a little bit about your event, what you do, and, and what got you hooked on ski jumping. Um, so I'm a ski jumper. Uh, we are the ones that go down the big ramp and jump off and lay over our skis in a V position and try to go as far as we can, Yeah. as stylishly as we can. Okay. Was there ever a part of you that, you know, wanted to explore other ski events, or was it from early on this is what you wanted to do? Um, you know, had I grown up somewhere like Park City, maybe I would have done that, but uh, I grew up in the Chicago area, and I was really into skiing um, all throughout my childhood, and the opportunity came up when I discovered the Norgie Ski Club was only 20 minutes away from my house when I was nine years old, and that was a way for me to go skiing almost every day uh, throughout the entire year. and. That got me really excited, and I always loved to catch air, so yeah. um, I just started doing that and fell in love with the sport. Well, it's awesome. You talk about the Norgi Ski Club and how that was probably a pretty big motivator for you to excel and to progress, but also uh, Casey Larson, a, a childhood friend of yours and who we have had on the show before, mm -hmm. talking about uh, his experience, his upbringing. I mean, did you guys grow up pushing each other, or, or was it just more of a friendship? Oh, yeah. No, for sure. Um, you know, friendship, but also... Uh, he's who you're competing against so yeah. you know you want to be your competitors and Casey and I were always pushing each other um, he started before me and so he was already 
better than me when I first started jumping. So, you know, it was like a race to catch up. Right. Well, you're very humble. Uh, <laughs> I'd, I'd like to hear that, you know, if there was ever a chat uh, at the top of the mountain, if you guys had, you know, a, uh, uh, you actually are better than me. I'm sure there's a lot more, <laughs> there's probably a lot more competition. No, it's there. not that polite up top. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure. Um, let's talk a little bit about the games that you just recently returned from just okay. a, a couple months ago. Um, like I said, two-time Olympian here, so you got to enjoy Pyeongchang as well as Beijing. Tell me just a little bit about the differences between the two. Oh, it was pretty huge differences. Yeah. Um, I'm sure Pyeongchang was pretty typical as far as Olympics go. Um, you know, you do your sport, but after that's over, you can attend all the other events, you can explore the country, experience the culture, have fans there, have your family and friends come watch you. Beijing was a bit strange. Uh, we were kind of stuck in this athlete bubble and only allowed to go to designated areas. And we still could go to other events um, as long as they were near our, our villages. But, um, you know, we were kind of limited with the time that we had. And when our events were over, we kind of just left. So uh, most athletes didn't stick around for closing ceremonies. And um, there's just a lot of little differences like that. Yeah. Well, being such a young Olympian, you're only 25 years old and you've already attended two different mm -hmm. um, games. I wanted to ask you about your lifestyle is so different from <laughs> other 25 year old uh, college students. You either travel around Europe, around the world, really, to compete in World Cup events mm -hmm. or you're in some random place for an Olympic Games every four years or you're here in Park City practicing and competing at the Centers of Excellence. Tell me just a little bit about your lifestyle? Is it something that you plan on doing for 10 more years? Um, I'm not sure how long I plan on doing it. You know, I've, I've had a good time doing it. I have no regrets about it. Um, but it also is a lot. Um, you know, I'm watching my peers go through the normal routine of, you know, go to college, get a job, and they're kind of starting their life. And I'm enjoying what I'm doing now. I'm not sure if 10 years I will be, but um, for the time being, I'm definitely going to take advantage of this opportunity I have. It's definitely a unique one and not an opportunity that most people have. Hey, Brigham, thank you so much. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with the rest of that interview with the two-time Olympian, Kevin Bickner. Beautiful sandy beaches and lush tropical gardens make San Diego the perfect destination for your next luxury getaway. I'm Stephanie J. This is the Opulent Minute. This home has amazing charm and style. You'll feel refreshed in this La Jolla Shores beauty. I'm here with Lauren, the owner of Pop-Up Picnic Co. Tell us about the services you offer. We're a luxury picnic service. Our claim to fame is one-stop picnic experience that we bring throughout San Diego. Book Pop-Up Picnic Co. through our concierge services page on opulentvacations.com. The open concept living and dining room easily flow to a comfortable and inviting deck. The enclosed and spacious yard provide plenty of room for outdoor entertainment. With easy access to some of the best shopping and dining San Diego has to offer. Whether it's relaxing on the property or enjoying fun activities at the beach, the Shores Retreat La Jolla has something for everyone. Thanks for watching the Opulent Minute. Book now at opulentvacations.com. Hey everyone, welcome back into The Scoreboard. I'm your host, Blake Orulian. We're gonna jump right back into that interview with Kevin Bickner, where he's talking to Brigham Harris a little bit more about his ski jumping career. So without further ado, here is Kevin Bickner. And the things that you do, and, and the things that you do incredibly well, um, are, are definitely things that are going to, if you you know put your mind to it, are gonna have you etched on a mantelpiece uh, <laughs> for a long time when it comes to ski jumping. You've sort of already done that. In mm -hmm. 2016, you were named the USSA uh, Ski Jumping Athlete of the Year. Tell me a little bit about that honor and uh, maybe any future goals you have. Uh, yeah, so I got the one in 2016, I think, 16, 17, and 18 I won that oh, award. Wow. Okay. Um, 16 was kind of like a breakout year when I started jumping on World Cup the whole season. Um, got my first World Cup points. Uh, went over 200 for the first time on ski flying. Uh, the next year I was consistently scoring World Cup points, doing really well. Um, and also the same year that I broke the American distance record. Uh, so I jumped 244 and a half meters. And then um, the year after that was the Olympic year, and uh, it was my best World Cup um, year in terms of 
ranking and I had set some pretty lofty goals for the Olympics and I achieved them all and I was really excited about that. So for a few years there, I was, I was um, seeing a lot of success mm. that yeah. I was happy with. Yeah. Well, you're still, a, uh, again, a very successful <laughs> ski jumper, just returned from Beijing. Uh, anytime you're an Olympic athlete, I got to believe you're, you've still got it in, in many, many ways. Oh, yeah. We also spoke, uh, like we mentioned, with uh, Casey, a longtime friend of yours and a teammate. He's also kind of going through school in a little bit slower of, of a pace. Tell me a little bit about your college experience so far and, and what you're studying. So I have really just been doing the um, Olympic program that they offer at DeVry. Uh, mm -hmm free free college to any of the athletes online um so it's convenient i can do it anywhere in the world because i'm usually not in america right <laughs> um, and i can go at a really slow pace so that i'm not overwhelmed with school and i can make ski jumping my priority mm -hmm. uh, so i've i've just been taking one class at a time and moving really slowly yeah well it, you're used to moving really fast and flying really far <laughs> so if you're taking one thing slowly i think i think people will be all right with it right um let's talk uh, just a little bit about again your lifestyle is so incredible you travel all around the world year round it's probably pretty rare seldom that you're in your hometown uh, of wakanda illinois mm -hmm. Let's talk uh, just a little bit about when you are training for the World Cup season or mm -hmm. you're training for an Olympics, say starting now until about November, what is the main goal for you? Is it reaching and breaking your own personal records or is it just getting better, getting stronger every day? Um, getting better, getting stronger, uh, as long as you're focusing on those types of things, mm -hmm. the results will come. So I don't think about the results too much while I'm training. Uh, April is kind of an off month for us, uh, a little bit of recovery time. Uh, May is when we start getting back into it and training and getting back into shape and then June we'll start jumping. Um, either some athletes will go over to Europe and take their first jumps over there. Uh, some of us will take their first jumps in Park City. But it's kind of a mix between being in Park City and being over in Europe for a lot of the summer and then we usually go over for a summer competition series and then a little more back and forth and then in November we go over there for good for like the entire five month season. Yeah. Um, you, you said take their first jump or take your first jump mm -hmm. of the of the new season. Yeah. Is that terrifying at all? I mean, I know you said you only take about a month off in yeah. April and then in May and then June you're back on it. But is the very first jump of a new season, do you do you get butterflies or is it just business as usual? It's I mean, a little bit of both, you know, yeah. you're a ski jumper, you know what you're doing. Um, maybe like a little bit of butterflies, like oh, I haven't done this in a month, but you know you're gonna be fine and you just go out and jump and get that first one over with. Yeah. Um, all right, well, Kevin, uh, I appreciate you taking so much time with us. I have one more question. Okay. Right? I don't know if this is even gonna make the interview because <laughs> this is just on my mind. You've got some beautiful hair. Oh, thank you. You've got some, you've got some long hair, <laughs> some lettuce that is just flowing out of the beanie. Have you ever and will you ever hit a ski jump just to let that hair fly out in the background? We, you know, would, we would love to see it. I have never actually done that. <laughs> it's always tied up. But I, there was a part of me that last event of the Olympics, I wanted to just let it all out. But I thought that might be a little ridiculous looking, so I didn't. But I should definitely give it a try. <laughs> if we could somehow get the rights to that photo <laughs> of you flying hundreds of meters uh, in the air and your hair is just flying backwards, we will do whatever we can to make that happen. Absolutely. Okay, but thank you so much again. We appreciate the time. Uh, Kevin Bickner uh, with the USA Team Nordic, and we'll be right back after this. Hi, I'm Dr. Melissa, and I'm a Harvard-trained researcher and psychiatrist I have treated thousands of individuals struggling with mental health issues. Given that so many patients are resistant to many treatment modalities, I began learning about a procedure called TMS. My mom did TMS and she's definitely been a different person since. I've become kind of a spokesperson for the treatment because I do feel like it was successful, it was beneficial and I wouldn't go anywhere else for it. TMS is a non-invasive treatment that treats specific regions of the brain involved in mood, anxiety, and thinking abilities. And I love that TMS is well tolerated by most individuals and has very few side effects. Really, the whole process was amazing. So please give us a call, because I'd love to find out if what we've done for Shauna and so many others we can also do for you.
Hey everyone, welcome back into The Scoreboard. I'm your host, Blake Orulian. The 2021 5A State Championship is held by the Wasatch Boys soccer team. And this year, they're looking to repeat, but that is going to take a little bit more effort with a younger squad. And one of those younger players is Jackson Medina, their goalkeeper. Brigham Harris got the chance to talk to them following their three to one loss to Provo High School. So with that being said, here is Brigham Harris talking to Jackson Medina. Hey, what's up guys? Brigham Harris here hanging out with Jackson Medina, the starting goalkeeper for Wasatch High School Boys Soccer. Jackson, uh, today was a little bit of a misstep in your guys' season, uh, losing to a Provo High School team 3-1. to one. Tell me just your initial thoughts uh, coming off the field just a few minutes ago. Um, we weren't, we just weren't ready very much. We were just kind of just hitting it up. Everybody was just running away from the ball. Like, we just weren't playing how we usually play. Yeah. And we had a bad practice yesterday. Practice how you play, and that just, that just didn't help at all. Yeah. What would you say was wrong with the practice? You mentioned you had a bad practice yesterday. Was it was the vibe just kind of off? Yeah. Not a lot of communication? Just, yeah, it was just the vibe was off. We were just kind of like, eh, you know? Yeah. Yeah, we were just weren't ready. Yeah. Well, this is a good Provo team. We yeah. knew that they were second in region. You guys were third in region. We knew that this was going to be a competitive game. Mm -hmm. What was the scouting report like, and, and what did you guys talk about before the game? We knew they were going to come at us like really hard, very physical, just like high press, but we, we just weren't ready for it. We just thought they were a different, another team, but yeah. What was the conversation like after the game? Uh, you guys spent a good handful of minutes with head coach Hendry talking a little bit about, you know, what went wrong. What were some of the things he told you and the rest of the guys? We're just trying to, they're asking us what our play style should be because here we weren't trying to pass or we were just booting the whole time. We're like, we, we don't know if we just want to try and out like, like with physical or just try and play, but we didn't do any of that today. So, yeah. Well, you're only a sophomore. We talked a little bit off camera before this interview. You were a part of that state championship team last year yeah. as a freshman. Uh, what are some things you learned at such a young age and now you're going to implement as a varsity starting goalkeeper, again, just in 10th grade? Um, subs are crucial. They got to come on and change the game. It's very crucial that you have nice, good subs that come on and do well. You're such a young player, but you're a leader on this team. Obviously, goalkeeper, major, major position. What are some things you're looking to uh, work on this year personally? Um, just try and get everybody together, a little more close. Mm -hmm. Like, especially with our JV team, because some of those members of the JV team are going to be varsity next year. So we got to got to keep it close and a good culture. Yeah. Well, you're definitely a, a good example of going from JV to starting varsity. Mm -hmm. um, tell me just about maybe some goals for the rest of the season. We also mentioned, you know, this is the very first game of the region. This isn't, you know, playoffs by any means. You guys still have a couple of months left in the season. What are yeah. some, you know, things you guys want to work on? Just trying to find our play style, get closer, like I said, and we need to win games, you know. We're not, like, we're just preseason. We're like, eh, it's just preseason. Like, yeah. that's how we came out against Bingham when we lost 1-0. Yeah. So we're, I think we're definitely going to change that. Yeah, that was your only other loss. I wanted to mention that, a very tough Bingham team. Yeah. Um, again, we're looking for you guys to bounce back. Uh, last question, is there any game this season in particular that you're, like, just so stoked to play? I was actually so stoked for Provo because my cousin's Cade, he's okay. 21, so I was really looking forward to that, but we didn't come out on top. Yeah. Also, Salem Hills. Salem Hills. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, good news is, like I mentioned, first game of region, you guys are going to have another crack at Provo mm -hmm. and two chances at Salem Hills, yeah. so uh, we'll hopefully get to catch up with you after a couple of wins down the road, and, right. and thank you for your time, man. Thank you. 4-2 and two right now is the record of the Wasatch Boys soccer team, and they're looking to continue to develop and grow, and as Jackson said, grow a little bit closer as a team. We can't wait to continue to cover them and see what they do in the postseason. And when we come back, we're going to be winding down a little bit, finishing up the show, and talking to you a little bit about what's to look forward to for next week's episodes on The Scoreboard. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Hi, guys. I'm Janet, the Dairy King. We're famous here for our ice cream. We have 84 different kinds of shapes. We also have some amazing food. So come and try our chicken strips, our fish and chips dinners, our burgers, our fries, our sweet potato fries. Oh my gosh, we've got so much. Once you go over to the Heber Valley Railroad and ride their train, then of course you have to come here and see all of our trains. Our family serving your family since 1946. We hope to see you soon here at the Dairy King.
Hey everyone, welcome back into the scoreboard. We really appreciate everyone riding with us today. It's been a really fun show. We got the chance to talk to an Olympian, a new state record holder, and a defending champion in Jackson Medina. So we've got a whole lot that's coming next week as well. We're going to be talking to actually a couple of basketball players from North Summit High School. A bunch of them, a handful of them actually made the all-state teams. And there's a couple different storylines. We also might be talking to Marcy Richens, who is doing very, very well up at North Summit for their track and field team. We're also going to be talking to Casey Larson of the U.S. Olympic team and much, much more. We have a whole lot that's coming up and we continue to cover these incredible athletes and incredible coaches on the scoreboard. Make sure to check us out on PCTV on Tuesdays and Fridays at 6 and 10 p.m. You can also go to our website to check out an older interview or an older episode if you might have missed one that you wanted to check out at thescoreboardnation.com. And make sure to check out our Instagram at scoreboardnation where Brigham and I love to post different trailers, give the audience a little bit of a look into what we do going to games, conducting interviews, talking to different players, and also talking to different coaches and athletic directors, and so much more. Thank you so much. We will catch you next Tuesday on PCTV at 6 and 10 p.m.